for, for many Americans, we're, we're heading into holiday season and they're, you're uh, trying to think about uh, buying Christmas gifts and, and all those sorts of things, right? And this has been a year when uh, your, your paycheck has slowly, uh, you know, uh, seems smaller and smaller and smaller um, every month uh, as, as cost of living has gone up, as inflation has taken its toll. How do, how do we solve that? Um, what's uh, you know what, what's the the first thing that you think Congress needs to try to do uh, to try to get that um, back in line and to uh, be able to provide some relief for uh, Americans who are uh, are really struggling with that economic anxiety that we're all I think experiencing. I mean, obviously, the very basis of uh, our economy is energy. Everything that we do starts with having energy to propel manufacturing, um, logistics, transportation, you name it. Um, with, without a domestic supply that is reliable, um, that is a problem. If we're dependent on our adversaries, let's just be honest, uh, across the globe for our very basic fuel supply, we're, we're not gonna be in a good place. Um, from a national security standpoint or an economic one. So I think restarting the domestic production, expanding domestic production of our energy, um, there's 200 years worth of natural gas in Pennsylvania alone. Um, we should be expanding um, the above all energy approach in this country. Uh, I'm sorry, wind and solar is not going to fuel America. It's gonna be a part of it, but it's not gonna be the answer to all of it. Um, so I think right away, if we can address some of the hurdles that we're having with the energy portfolio of this nation, that's going to that's gonna start a, an, a good reboot in bringing down the cost of everything. Because whether it's your food, whether it's your clothing, whether it's your, your supplies, your whatever, your basic goods, everything is driven largely by the price of your inputs, which largely is fuel. So that's going to be one way we can bring it down. You hit on the fact that you know we're heading into the holiday season and people are paying more across the board. Well, yeah, this is what happens when you spend ten trillion dollars on BS programs. Let's just be honest. Um, so we have to stop the spending. You got to stop the bleeding. You know, we've got to put the tourniquet on. We've got to latch it down, and we have to stop the bleeding. Um, throwing money at a problem does not make it go away. That needs to be screamed by every member at the top of their lungs in every part of Washington, DC. We have to get out of the mindset that throwing money at a problem is going to fix it. It doesn't. Sometimes it's a simple policy change. Sometimes you just gotta get rid of certain departments. Yeah. You know, um, I think that is going to help tremendously. When you have an inflation at over, I think, what is it, 8.3 now, um, nationally, you have people that are spending 84 to 85 hundred dollars more annually just in basic goods and services than they were the year before. Well, that doesn't leave a whole lot of room for you know a very merry Christmas. So I think people are going to be hurting. People are going to pare down you know the the Christmas spending, the holiday stuff. But um, I think the biggest gift that we can give folks back home is being better stewards of their money. It's not monopoly money. This is this is our money. And I think that a good reminder is going to take place when the gavel switches hands in January, on January 3rd, that this is the people's money and we're here to do the people's work, not craft big congressional careers and, you know, have these big fancy, you know, jobs and offices. I don't think that that's, I think there's a culture shift happening here and I'm excited for that. 